Good morning, kids and parents. Uh, Pastor Justin coming to you again for like week four now. I don't know. I'm losing track. I uh, can't wait to see you guys again in person. Uh, we're going to continue on with our gospel project, and we're moving into a whole new unit today. This is Unit 20, Session 1, uh, and today we're looking at Jesus' baptism. Okay, but before we get into the lesson, I uh, just want to go over some review with you because with a new unit comes a new uh, big picture question and also unit verse. So uh, our big picture question for this unit is this. Why did Jesus become human? Again, the question is, why did Jesus become human? And the way that we're answering that question is this. Jesus became human to obey His Father's plan and rescue sinners. Let's all say that together. Jesus became human to obey His Father's plan and rescue sinners. And that's our big picture question for this unit, all of Unit 20. We're going to go over that each time that we meet together, and hopefully that will be in person here soon. Uh, and also the key passage, the unit scripture, is this, John 30, oh, I'm sorry, it's John 3.30. And John 3.30 says this, He must increase, but I must decrease. Again, John 3.30. Say that with me. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3, 30. And so today, as we, uh, as we review those things, as we look forward, uh, we're going to hop back over to the book of Luke and look at Luke chapter 3. We just spent three weeks in Luke chapter 2 talking about uh, Jesus as a baby and being de dedicated at the temple and all of that fun stuff and Jesus' birth. Uh, and now we're going to move forward. Jesus is now an adult. He's a grown man. Uh, and he is starting out in his, um, his, in his ministry. Uh, and, and before that, I want to just take a, take a second because before Jesus was even born and he was inside of his, of his mother, Mary, uh, she went to go visit one of her relatives. Do you remember who that relative was? Well, if you don't, that relative was Elizabeth, and she goes to visit Elizabeth, and inside of Elizabeth's belly was, you got it, John the Baptist. And so John the Baptist was inside of his mom's belly, and if you remember that story, as soon as they come into the same room, it says that John leaps inside of his mother because he knows that he's in the presence of the Messiah. He knows that God is there. Uh, even in his mother's womb. So we're going to fast forward now. They're all adults. And John the Baptist had one job. And John's purpose in life was this, is that he was making a way and, and announcing uh, the coming of Jesus. All right. And so we start in, in, in Luke chapter 3 and we see this. And it, it gives us some scripture that points back to Isaiah that talks and tells us about John the Baptist. And it says this, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Well, that was John preparing the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be made low. The crooked will become straight, the rough way smooth, and everyone will see the salvation of God. All of that, that imagery is talking about how Jesus is going to make a way for, for man to get back to God. And so we're, we, we look at this and um, we see John is in the wilderness, and we think that, that he's out in, in the forest somewhere uh, where no people are around. Well, uh, it's interesting because it's just like a, a cluster of, of bushes or a small set of trees. Uh, it could be, you know, something just, just quick there right next to the side of the, uh, the road uh, is in that culture called the wilderness. And so uh, John is in the wilderness, and at this point in time, uh, he's there by the Jordan River, and he's calling people and talking to people to repent and, and to follow God. Well, Jesus hasn't been crucified yet, but, but John is making the way for the Messiah because in their culture, they knew that there was a Messiah coming. They were looking forward, and John was was calling people to repent of their sins and to follow God and to be baptized in that. And then all of a sudden, uh, they're asking John, the people are asking John, who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you God? And he says, no, 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 I'm not that. There's one greater than me that's coming. And so 
all of a sudden Jesus comes their way and he says, uh, uh, John says, behold, this is, this is the one, this is the Messiah. Uh, and, and what shocks John next that Jesus says, Jesus says, you are going to baptize me. And he says, no, I'm not worthy to do that. You should baptize me. But all along, this was all part of God's plan. But I want to pause right there for just a second, because if baptism is a, a symbol of us repenting of our sin and following Jesus, if that's a symbol, then why did Jesus get baptized? Well, Jesus was not doing it because he had sin in his life. He was not doing it because he needed to repent of his sin. He was doing it to set an example for you and for me of, of how to follow him. And so when, when we view baptism, it's... <laughs> okay, so if being baptized is a symbol of us repenting of our sin and following God, then why did Jesus have to be baptized? Well, Jesus didn't have any sin to repent of. He didn't need to uh, have forgiveness of his sins because he was perfect. He was fully God and fully man. But yet Jesus uh, submits himself to baptism to set an example for you and for me on what we should do. And so, so we see that he does that and, and, and he asks John and he says, hey, I need you to be the one to do this. And John says, no, I can. And, and then eventually John does that for him. And then it says this in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, it says, When all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized. As he was praying, heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in the physical appearance like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved son. I take delight in you. And so we see that this was all part of God's plan for Jesus. This was all part of his plan and Jesus submitting to the Father's will. And as Jesus submits to the Father's will, um, there are things that happen. And so for you and for me, it's sometimes tough to submit to uh, what our parents would say. And so sometimes we tell our kids that, hey, stop fighting and stop moving around and, and doing things like that, but they don't always listen um, and, and there's times that actually they do, which is a surprise. And so um, we're kind of like that with God as well, is where God can have a plan for us. And, and we're like, well, I, I kind of want to do this thing instead of following your plan. Um, and so we should set and follow Jesus' example of submitting to God's plan for us, whatever that may be. Sometimes that can look scary because it's, it's unknown. We don't know what that is. Um, but as we submit to Him and follow, uh, we will see that. And so I just want to follow up with this. Our Christ connection here, um, it talks to us in, a, in our Gospel Project material. And it just says this, Jesus never sinned, but He obeyed God and was baptized like sinners are baptized. Bapti baptism sorry, reminds us of Jesus' death and resurrection. It reminds us that when we trust in Jesus, we turn from sin and start a new, a new life, a life lived for Jesus. That's my prayer for you, and that's my prayer for me, is that we would live a life for Jesus. So I'm going to pray for us, uh, and then um, you guys can go on about your day and whatever it is that you have going on today. Let's pray. God, we love you. Uh, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you. Um, that you came to this earth, that you gave up everything in heaven to submit yourself and humble yourself to be born as a baby and to live a life, um, and a, a sinless life, God, and following the Father's plan for your life, uh, even unto death. And so next week, uh, we're going to look at and remember uh, you following and submitting to your Father even unto death in the crucifixion on the cross. And so, God, we, we hold on to all of the truths in your word. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you for what it means. And, God, we love you. We praise you. Uh, and I pray for safety for all of our kids, for all of our families. God, I pray for safety for uh, uh, um, our world in general. God, I pray for our leaders in our world making decisions 
that you will be with them, that they, that they will uh, have people put in their paths that give them godly advice and, and, and God, that they will seek wisdom in making decisions. We know that you are in control of all things. We trust you. We love you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.